digging deep in the gates. Now, as we all know, the finishing move is the most important move in a professional wrestler's arsenal. The move needs to be visually impressive, but it also needs to create an illusion that the move being executed actually hurts. Moves such as the GTS, Hulk's got him up. The, GTS. the sharpshooter, and Charlotte, no choice but to tap or even the traditional pile driver all look legitimate and look like they're actually painful to take. Despite this, it is very common for a wrestler to introduce a finisher that doesn't look as legitimate. Instead, they pick a move that gets a crowd reaction rather than a move that looks like it could actually finish off their opponent. It's a caterpillar! Honest! <laughs> this match continues! But which ones look like they couldn't hurt a fly? Join us now as WrestleMania looks at 10 WWE finishes that wouldn't hurt a fly. Be sure to subscribe and hit that notification bell for daily wrestling videos. Number 1. The Wasteland Muscles daring young up. It was obvious that when Wade Barrett made his WWE debut as part of the first season of NXT in 2010, the WWE saw him as a future star. I am the next WWE superstar. He would go on to lead the Nexus group and would feud with John Cena and Randy Orton in the months to come in top programs on Raw. Barrett himself was a decent enough wrestler and had excellent promo ability. However, one of the things holding him back was his Wasteland finishing move. 460 pounds, Mark Henry slammed to the mat below. The move was simply a fireman's carry, which proceeded with Barrett rolling his opponent to the canvas. Because Barrett rolled his opponent to the ground rather than throwing them to the ground meant that the move itself had little to no noise in the ring, so it looked and sounded pretty awful. It was made even worse by the fact that the move looked like it didn't hurt and it was literally a roll onto the ground, so it was hard to buy into the fact that this move could beat top stars, especially when they're using more devastating maneuvers to finish off their opponents. Eric continues to dish out the punishment here on Yoshitatsu. Luckily in 2013, Barrett would adopt the Bullhammer Elbow, which looked a lot more devastating and he would use this move moving forward until his WWE departure in 2016. Number 2. Bailey to Belly The belly to belly suplex was made famous by the likes of Kurt Angle and Brock Lesnar as they made the move look devastating mainly because they incorporated a release into their move so the opponent went flying around the ring when the move was executed. Since her early NXT days, Bailey has used a belly to belly as a finisher and she appropriately named it the Bailey to Belly. Unfortunately, the pun is the best thing about this infamous move. Oh, hold on, wait a minute. Oh. Oh. The problem with the finishing move is that it doesn't look like it hurts anyone. Bailey simply hugs the person then falls with them to the ground. It doesn't look legitimate in the slightest. The referee never saw it. Was tended to an injury to Bailey, perhaps. Since Bailey's heel turn in 2019, she has attempted a new finisher called the Rose Plant, which was met with negative reviews by the majority of fans. Still, it looks a lot better than the Bailey to Belly. Number three, the Playmaker slash Overdrive. Long before the days when Randy Orton was hitting RKO's out of nowhere, he was using an awful finishing move called the Overdrive, and it was one of the worst looking finishes of all time. The move would involve Orton bending his opponent over, locking his leg around the wrestler's head, keeping hold of their arm, and then spinning them down to the mat. The move is terrible because it just involves the opponent falling to the ground with no force whatsoever, so it's unclear how it's supposed to incapacitate the opponent. Whatever his name is. Oh, you're tough. Oh, that was unique. 
In 2006, the move was brought back by MVP when he debuted on SmackDown, but the reputation of the move wasn't improved and MVP also looked awkward executing it, especially when performing it on the likes of Kane and The Undertaker. The move just doesn't look legitimate or painful enough to be used as a finishing move. Number 4. The Rear View Now don't get us wrong, Naomi without question is one of the most talented women's wrestlers in the entire WWE. She's a two-time women's champion and is one of the most popular stars on the women's roster. However, her finish has always been a weak point to her character. Oh, a rear view! Naomi uses a move called the rear view as a finisher. The move involves her jumping up and hitting her opponent with a behind, hence the name rear view. It's unclear if the move is supposed to be comedic or not. However, it is a move that would be seen 20 years ago in a bygone era. Oh, no way! Kidding? No way! <laughs> and doesn't really fit in today's era. Number 5. Kazani Finisher. Miyazak. Miyazak. What? Trying to explain to newer fans of WWE what the gimmick that Kazani had in 2009 is quite a difficult task. We is here, Leah's life. I am Kazani. Kazani himself would later describe the gimmick as if Jake the Snake Robertson doing produced a love child. The gimmick in essence was a man wearing face paint who was from the carnival. Be that as it may, he would debut in January of 2009 defeating the credible MVP before being released from the company in March of that same year. The gimmick didn't really connect with the audience, even in his few appearances, because it was difficult to understand what the gimmick actually was and what the motivations of a character such as Kazani were. One of the things you may remember about him was his finisher. So close! Oh, oh. What was that? In essence, the finisher was supposed to be a double arm DDT, however his variation involved a roll through, meaning his opponent simply did a forward roll. The finisher looked terrible, it was confusing, and it wouldn't have possibly hurt another human being. Number 6. John Cena's 6th Move of Doom oh, wait, wait. The lightning fist. <laughs> When you're a top guy in the WWE, your finisher should be incredibly important. The finishing move and signature moves of John Cena have been a debate for the past 15 years. Now, Cena has become infamous for having the five moves of doom. This going behind the idea that he only has five moves in his arsenal, but that's enough for him to seemingly win every match. Fast forward to 2018 and Cena would finally debut a sixth move and appropriately name it the sixth move of doom. I couldn't think of a better way to show my appreciation for China. The move was promoted prior on social media and fans were expected to be blown away by the move as Cena had certainly got a lot better in the ring in recent years. However, during the Super Showdown pay-per-view in 2018, Cena would finally perform the move and it was simply one of the worst looking moves in WWE history. Cena began by doing a bizarre cross with his arms, he then proceeded to throw a basic worked punch at Elias and that was it. Fans in attendance didn't know what to make of the move as it was truly awful. It was made even worse by the fact that Elias had to sell a basic worked punch as a finishing move and it just came across as comedic rather than impactful. The move didn't look like it hurt in the slightest or never mind hurt enough to pin another wrestler. Number 7. The Cobra Cobra finishing move was made famous by Santino Marella. The move in essence is Santino putting a snake puppet on his hand and then proceeding to make a small jab in his opponent's neck. Now we know that this move was just pure comedy. Cobra strike! It wasn't meant to be taken seriously, but the move had almost won Santino a world title in the past when world champion Daniel Bryan had to sell the Cobra like death inside the Elimination Chamber. In relation to the creation of the Cobra, Santino stated, There was a guy who showed me this Cobra move a long time ago at a bar in Japan, and I just did it one time and tried it in a match, and I asked John Cena to watch and tell me what he thought of it, and when I came back because the crowd laughed immediately when I did it, we kept it and it just took on a life of its own. It's an entertaining move. It's a little bit silly, but the people loved it, so you've got to give them what they love. 
So now we can blame John Cena for the popularity of this comedic move. Who told you? Um, how dare you? Number eight, the Samoan spike. Well packed as well. Yeah. Put down the Samoan bulldozer Umaga was incredibly underrated and had several memorable matches throughout his WWE career with the likes of John Cena and Jeff Hardy. However, one of the reasons that WWE didn't go all the way with the former IC champion was that his finisher didn't match his gimmick. Umaga would use the move called the Samoan Spike, where he jabbed his thumb in the opponent's throat. Umaga would tape his thumb heavily so it looked more legitimate, but it was never really respected as a finisher because it looked so lousy and fans questioned how it was supposed to hurt. The move hardly got a reaction from the fans when it was executed and was a really poor choice for a larger wrestler to use. During 2007, when Umaga was positioned as a main eventer, JR on commentary began to say that Umaga was aiming for an artery to stop the blood flow of his opponent. That's Samoan like spike right into the carotid artery, the throat of Rip Rip But it never really added anything to the move as fans could clearly see that Umaga was safely hitting the shoulder of his opponent. Number 9, The Worm. It is the single most insulting move across the country. The Worm. That's oh! Scotty's move, King! The worm. People! The Worm was one of the most popular finishers of the Attitude Era, mainly because the move incorporated vocal fan involvement. But it certainly never looked legitimate or looked like it was remotely painful to take. The move would be done by one half of Too Cool, Scotty Too Hotty, and would involve Scotty taking 30 seconds to dance around his opponent before doing the worm dance move and following it up with a chop whilst his opponent was on the floor. You're never going to be successful in this business, Scotty. You understand me? The move was likely one of the reasons that Scotty never went beyond the comedic character due to how silly and lackluster his finisher actually was. To McIntyre! <laughs> oh, you gotta love it. And number 10, the people's elbow. People's Elbow is one of the most popular WWE moves of all time, and not to mention The Rock being one of the most popular stars not in just WWE, but also in pop culture. I didn't leave and just quietly walk away and never to be seen again. I left into a world I wanted to find success in. The People's Elbow was first used by The Rock in 97, and the move in essence is a standard elbow drop with extra theatrics. Despite the move looking ridiculous and looking like it doesn't hurt anyone, whenever The Rock used it, it received an incredible ovation from the audience and they instantly knew that the match was about to be over. It is a vintage rock! Another people's elbow! Yes! Triple H recently commented on the origin of the finishing move, stating, I believe the first time Rock did the people's elbow was in a match where we were trying to make take a crack. It absolutely started as a joke, and then it was getting a huge reaction, and everybody went with it. So that was the reason behind The Rock using the people's elbow. It essentially just started off as a joke. But there you have it guys, 10 WWE wrestling finishes that wouldn't hurt a fly. Are there any more that we should have included here? Let us know in the comments down below, subscribe if you haven't already, follow us on Instagram and Facebook for exclusive lists, and I'll see you next time with some more wrestling content.